All right, so this is the 14 inch Jolly Ball push and play. And what we have to do here to get it ready for use is fill in this hole because the dogs uh, can use this, grab it with one of their teeth and actually pick up the ball and uh, scratch it up, put holes in it, all kinds of stuff. So, and this plus is not good for their teeth, apparently. Um, so, what we want to do is we're going to make sure, just from day one, that they don't think they can ever pick this ball up. All right, so this is the plug here. It's supposed to be for adding water or sand to uh, the jolly ball. You can see just a hole in there. This is a threaded plug. You want to have some kind of epoxy. I like using the JB Weld because it's a little bit thicker, which helps to uh, keep a shape. A uh, piece of cardboard or whatever you got to mix it on. Um, ideally some popsicle sticks or whatever to mix up the epoxy. And then we need some tape just to cover the ball so we don't get epoxy all over the place. And the sandpaper. Um, we need it first to scuff up the plastic on the ball so that the epoxy has something to grab to and then we're going to use it to sand over the epoxy to make it smooth and make it even with the top of the wall. So what I like to do is get some sandpaper and just scuff up the inside of this here. Otherwise this is just plastic and there's not a lot that really wants to stick to plastic. Um, so by putting the, by sanding it down, it gives it pretty much some teeth. It gives it something to grab onto. This is like some 80 grit sandpaper. Um, and that should do the job just fine. And then we don't want to have any smooth edges because that, that doesn't help us with the bond. So I just stuffed it up with the sandpaper here. I'm just going to put some Teflon tape on here because my Rottweiler Kato uses this thing in his pool all the time. He loves dunking it. And what I like to do is just turn it back a little bit counterclockwise and you'll feel a little right there. And then you know your threads are all lined up and you can tighten her up. some tape on here to try and keep things a little bit clean. Or else you get epoxy all over the place and that is a pain in the butt. And I just want to cut. So Take the sandpaper, just run around a little bit here. <laughs> that makes sure that we don't have any tape hanging underneath. With most epoxies, you want to mix an even amount of both. So you want to have the same amount, as close as you can, of part A to part B better to mix too much than not enough in this situation. We'll try and get the same amount of each one and that looks pretty close ish. And then basically we mix these guys together and then we have about five minutes to work with it so when you've got a nice even color and consistency this hardens up, we want to take the tape off, that way we're not disrupting everything happening.
after it's dried. This is an 80 grit. We're just trying to match the contour of the wall here. It's a good idea to keep the box because that really helps hold everything in place. So the other thing I like to do, um, just to keep things consistent, is sand that over as well, smooth that out. Obviously that makes quick work of this. Hope this was helpful.